I'm not going to tell you how old she is. But she's somewhere between 66 and 68 years old. Somewhere in between there, somewhere. <laughs> ah. All right, praise the Lord. Hopefully I can get done and get you out of here. I know you got a lot of stuff to do today and a busy, busy, busy schedule. Praise God. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, and I'm going to let you be seated, but I'm going to read some more scriptures. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you. This only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit. Did you receive the Holy Ghost by the works of the law? Or did you receive the Holy Ghost by the hearing of faith? How did you get the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. How did you get the Holy Ghost? Amen. By the hearing of the law? Amen. Or by the hearing of faith? Or by the works of the law or the hearing of faith? You can be seated this morning. Galatians chapter 4, <clears throat> picking right up in the middle of a story here for time's sake. Amen. We're going to begin reading at verse 16. Hallelujah. Paul said to those same foolish Galatians that he addressed in chapter 3 and verse 1, <clears throat> he said, Am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth, they zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, not only when I am present with you. My little children of whom I travailed in birth again until Christ be formed in you, <clears throat> I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, <clears throat> for I stand in doubt of you. <clears throat> Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he that was of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory? For these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, which gendered to bondage, which is Agar. And this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. And answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Amen. Which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry thou that travailest not. Amen. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I am a child of promise. Amen. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so is it now. Amen. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be an heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren... Are we not children of the bondwoman, amen, but of the free? Hallelujah. Amen. We are children of New Jerusalem, or Jerusalem, which is from above. Hallelujah. Jerusalem, which is from above, is the mother of us all. He is reminding them. Hallelujah. Amen. So, amen, he's asked them the question, did you receive the Holy Ghost, amen, by the works of the law? Did you receive the Holy Ghost by the hearing of faith? Hallelujah. Amen. And it is obvious here, amen, that these Galatians have been, amen, negatively affected, hallelujah, by the pressures of their generation. Amen. By the pressures of time that they are living in here. Hallelujah. Amen. There has come a negative effect, amen, upon the Galatian church here. Paul is concerned about them. He is, amen, writing to them. He's trying to wake them up, shake them up, amen, and make them realize, hey, hallelujah, amen, you didn't get the Holy Ghost by the works of the law, hallelujah, amen, you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost by the hearing of faith. You heard the gospel, amen, you put your faith in that gospel, amen, you repented because an apostolic preacher told you to repent. You got baptized in water because an apostolic preacher 
preacher told you, amen, that the next thing that you needed to do after repentance, amen, was to get baptized in water in Jesus' name. And then after you repented, after you received, amen, baptism in Jesus' name, then, amen, you were gloriously filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That did not come to you, amen, by the works of the law. Hallelujah. It came because you put your faith in God. Hallelujah. What a reminder, Paul. Amen. Is bringing to their attention. Hallelujah. But I got to slow down just a little bit this morning to try to bring the thought that God has brought across to me this morning. Hallelujah. I want to preach to you this morning simply from this title. Amen. Zealously affected. Hallelujah. Zealously affected. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the biggest battles of the first generation church, amen, was during the process of time, amen, that it took for them to realize, amen, the gospel was intended for all people. Hallelujah. Now, we know the Holy Ghost fell, amen, generally on all Jews, amen, or mostly Jews, amen, there on the day of Pentecost, hallelujah, amen. It was mostly Jews there in that upper room, amen, that received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, amen, that heard the gospel plan of salvation preached, amen, by Apostle Peter that day, hallelujah. So, amen, it all began with the Jews, mostly, hallelujah, amen, uh, amen, and uh, one of the biggest battles of the first generation church was in the process of time, uh, amen, that it took, amen, for those Jews to realize, hey, amen, this gospel, amen, of the new covenant of the New Testament is not just intended for you. Amen. Hallelujah. The, the gospel is intended, amen, for all people. Hallelujah. Amen. God opened the door for the Gentiles. And the Jews had a lot of difficulty conceiving this new concept. It was a brand new concept. Amen. For them, they had always been the chosen of God. They had always been the seed of Abraham. They had always considered them, amen, to be the chosen people of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Even though, amen, in the Old Testament, amen, a Gentile was or could, amen, Amen. Be converted to Judaism, even under the old covenant, under the old law. Amen. A Gentile, amen, even in the Old Testament was allowed, amen, here's a key word, to convert to Judaism. But for a Gentile, amen, to do that, they had to convert to Judaism. Hallelujah. We've got Rahab the harlot. We've got the Rechabites in the Old Testament. We've got the people of Gibeon in Joshua chapter 9, hallelujah, that made a league with Joshua and the children of Israel, and they were water toters and, amen, and wood toters and everything else, amen. But they were allowed, amen, to become a part, amen, of the people of God there because of, amen, the league that they made with Joshua in Joshua chapter 9. We've got Ruth, the grandmother of David, who was not a natural-born Jew, Amen. But she was allowed into Judaism. Hallelujah. Amen. And there's many, many, many other Gentiles in the Old Testament that was allowed into Judaism, but they had to convert to Judaism. Hallelujah. Which basically meant, amen, that all the men had to be circumcised the way the Jewish men were. Amen. And they all had to convert to Judaism. Hallelujah. Had to, amen, start obeying the law of Moses. Amen. Hallelujah. Adhering to the law of Moses. Hallelujah. Amen. But, amen, this New Testament gospel, amen, didn't require any of that. All of a sudden, amen, a door is open to the Gentiles, amen, that did not require all the men to be circumcised. Amen, that did not require all the Gentiles to, amen, immediately, immediately become observers of, amen, the old covenant. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and when this new thing began to happen, amen, I'm telling you, it threw the Jews for a loop. Hallelujah. Amen. It threw them into a chaotic state of mind when they realized that, hey, Amen. No more circumcision. No more law keeping. 
All that had changed in the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. When he went to Calvary, he suffered and died there. Amen. Hallelujah. At his death, he took down the middle wall of petition. Amen. That pretty much kept us out of the picture. Hallelujah. But now, all of a sudden, the Jews, amen, are seeing us in their picture. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, I kind of got my notes messed up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, so we got to realize something this morning. Praise God. In Acts chapter 10, amen, the Bible says, amen, tells us about Cornelius. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take my time and find where I want to be here. How about that? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Well, what if I can't find it? That means that that's the way that God's cutting down on my message, right? <laughs> All right. So maybe I left it in my office. Amen. All right. Get some else get some other stuff up. Hallelujah. But anyway, hallelujah. In, in the book of Acts chapter 10, Cornelius and his household was converted to the New Testament church through baptism, amen, and through infilling the Holy Ghost. Before Cornelius' house, Philip went down to Samaria, amen, and he went to the Samarians were considered to be half-breeds, half-Jew, half-Gentile, Amen. Mixed breed bunch of people. Hallelujah. Amen. And Philip went down to Samaria when the Apostle Paul started creating havoc. Amen. For the New Testament church. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, and when he went down there, they received the message. They, amen, received the message. Hallelujah. That uh, Philip brought to them. Praise God. And they began to, amen, obey the gospel. Amen. Philip saw their desire to obey the gospel. Amen. He called for Peter and John to come down. Peter and John came down. Amen. Began to lay hands on them and they began to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And simultaneously, amen, Philip is uprooted out of that revival and told to go out into the desert and join himself with an Ethiopian. Amen. That's on his trip. Amen. On a journey back to Ethiopia. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Philip joins himself with the Ethiopian. Amen. Explains what Isaiah is saying to him as the Ethiopian is riding the chariot there. Explains it to him. They find water. They baptize the Ethiopian. The Ethiopian, in my opinion, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost after he was baptized and took the gospel truth that he knew back to Ethiopia. Amen. And then we get down to, amen, uh, Cornelius' house in Acts chapter 10. Amen. Full-blooded, amen, Gentiles receiving, amen, hallelujah, being converted, amen, to this New Testament church plan of salvation, hallelujah, amen, the Jewish element of the church, amen, was suddenly thrust into a state of confusion. When these Samaritans received the gospel, when the Gentiles received, amen, the gospel, hallelujah, they begin to question, amen, how is it that the Gentiles are allowed in and not, and, 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 and in return, not have to abide by the law. Hallelujah. Amen. In Acts chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says here, amen, Acts chapter 11, Peter has made his way back from Cornelius' house. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, Peter is called on the carpet. Amen. For taking the gospel down to Cornelius' house. Amen. And, and the apostles and the brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. They began to question Peter. 
about why he took the gospel, amen, to Cornelius' house. They began to question Peter. How was it, amen, that he could sit down and eat a meal, amen, with unclean and unwashed Gentiles? Hallelujah. Amen. There in Acts chapter 11, Peter goes through, amen, how it all came down. The vision God gave him. Amen. How God compelled him, amen, to take the, the message down, amen, to Cornelius' house. Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, amen, in Acts chapter 11, Peter's called on the carpet. Hallelujah. Amen. For taking the gospel for the, to the Gentiles. We, amen, we can see the Jewish element of the church kind of in a rage, kind of in an upset state of mind. Hallelujah. How it is all of a sudden, amen, Gentiles are welcomed into uh, becoming sons of God, amen, without having to be circumcised, without having, amen, to abide by the law. The main issue, amen, of the Jews of the first generation was circumcision, hallelujah. Amen, you find it all throughout the writings of, amen, the New Testament. They were constantly, amen, trying to force, amen, the Gentiles into being circumcised, amen, and the rage against the Gentiles, Amen. Begin to grow. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the, the Jews' rage, amen, seemed to intimidate Peter. It seemed to, when, the, when he got back to Jerusalem and all the rage of the Jews, it seemed to intimidate Peter. Hallelujah. And in Galatians chapter 2, verse 7, reading down, but contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectively in Peter to the apostleship of circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go into the heathen. And they into the circumcision. We still see the divide here. Does anybody see the division in the new te- in the in the first century church? Amen. There's a division between the Jewish sect of the church and the Gentile, amen, element of the church. Hallelujah. And these are the first scriptures, amen, where we get an indication that the apostle Peter was an apostle, amen, to the circumcised. And the apostle Paul then, amen, was known as the apostle to the uncircumcised. There was a division in the Amen. In the in the church in the first generation. Hallelujah. Only they would that we should remember the poor. The same which also I was forward to do. Amen. So, amen. Paul's having this discussion. Amen. With the rest of the apostles. Hallelujah. Go ahead to the next verse. Amen. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James... He did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them, amen, which were of the circumcision. Hallelujah. And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas was carried away with that dissimulation. Amen. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of the Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Amen. Who were we who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles? Amen. Knowing that a man is not justified. Somebody hear him. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and uh, not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Hallelujah. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin God forbid. I'm, I'm, I'm reading as quickly as I can here. For if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. For, though, for I through the law am dead to the law that I might live under God. 
I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. The reason I'm reading all the scriptures to you this morning, amen, is so that you can see, amen, the battle that the first generation church had. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a battle between the Jews and the Gentiles. There was a battle between the circumcised and the uncircumcised. Amen. It took a long period of time, hallelujah, amen, for them, amen, to even halfway, amen, get clear of that battle that, that was raging, amen, hallelujah, in that first generation. Praise God. This is the first mention of Peter being, amen, an apostle to the circumcision and Paul being apostle to the uncircumcised. Paul's writings leaves us, amen, with an explicit picture of the struggles of the first generation church, amen, and how those struggles had an effect on the new converts, hallelujah. Amen, chapter 4, amen, chapter 4 and verse 17. Amen. Chapter 4 and verse 17 says this. They zealously, Paul is writing to the Galatians about the effect that these Jews are having on them. He said, they zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that you might affect them. Hallelujah. I. I hope I can make myself clear here today. Hallelujah. Paul is telling these Galatians, these Jews are zealously affecting you, but they're not affecting you in a positive way. They're affecting you in a negative way. They, amen. Hallelujah. They spend a lot of time and energy, amen, trying their best to exclude you from the church. Hallelujah. That's basically what Paul is telling them here. Amen. These folks are zealously affecting, amen, my work in God that I put invested in you. Hallelujah. These Jews have come along behind me, amen, and they have had a negative effect, amen, upon this church family. Hallelujah. They spend a lot of time. They spend a lot of energy, amen, and the most that they are, the, the very idea, amen, that they have is, amen, they want to exclude you. From the church. Hallelujah. They don't want you in their church. They don't want you to be a part of them. Hallelujah. Amen. So they spent a lot of time and energy trying to exclude these Galatians. Amen. 2,000 years later, amen, they're still trying to exclude us. Hallelujah. Amen. But I'm telling you this morning, we've been around this thing long enough now. Amen. That we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has a church today. Amen, that is made up mostly of Gentiles. Amen, who have been born again of the water, born again of the Spirit. Hallelujah, we've been blood-bought. We've been born again. Hallelujah. Amen, God has gloriously filled us with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen, and I can say this. Amen, I don't care what the Jews think about me. And I don't care how much, amen, effort they put into, amen, trying to exclude me, amen, from the number, hallelujah, amen. But when God filled me with the Holy Ghost, amen, on the first Sunday in April, amen, of 1979, God said, I'm including you in my body, hallelujah. Amen, I'm including you in my church in spite of what the Jews have to say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, but that's all, amen, the elements are not all of the elements, but a lot of the elements that the first generation church had to deal with, the effects of the Jews on the Gentile church, amen, was devastating in so many different ways. And Paul was just coming behind these Jews that had been through there and trying to reestablish them, amen, trying to, re he, he called them foolish, amen, how, I, you know, how can you so soon Amen. Be shaken from the faith. Hallelujah. Amen. But what is our generation facing today? That is zealously trying to affect our faith in God. 
Every generation has their battle. Hallelujah. Every, 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 every group of people has their battle. Hallelujah. So you and I, amen, may not be, amen, under the constant pressure of the Jews trying, amen, to exclude us here today. Amen. We've been in this thing long enough. No, we don't care what they say. God said, I want you to be a part of my bride. Hallelujah. But what is our generation, amen, facing today that is zealously, zealously trying to affect our faith in God? Let me say this. Denominational religion. Amen. Denominational religion has spent the last hundred plus years trying to exclude us from salvation. Hallelujah. When the outpouring of the Holy Ghost came to Topeka, Kansas, amen, word began to spread. Hallelujah. Denominational religion began to stand up at what happened in Topeka, Kansas. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the fire of the Holy Ghost moved to Azusa Street out in California. Revival began to break out. People started getting miracles and healing. Amen. Started being filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Word started spreading throughout. Amen. Denominational religion. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And what happened, amen, in most of those denominations religions, amen, they started spending time and a lot of effort, amen, trying to find ways to exclude, amen, any and every Pentecostal, amen, to exclude them, amen, from salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. We've been falsely accused now, amen, for over a hundred years, amen, of being in a cult. Amen. The way that they Amen, took, amen, the message to their churches about us was, amen, hey, don't go down there and visit that, amen, apostolic movement. Don't go down there, amen, to where those people are speaking in other tongues. And Amen, don't you dare go down there and visit, amen, that revival on Azusa Street. Amen, that is an occult. Amen, they are occult-related. Amen, they are involved in, amen, the occult in every shape. Size and form, hallelujah. Amen. They accused us, amen, of operating spiritual gifts under demonic powers. Right from the get-go, we became the occult in the denominational religions of our world. Why? Why? Amen, because, amen, by that time, the denominational religions had pretty much, amen, given up on healing and miracles. Hallelujah. Amen, many of them no longer believed in the healings and miracles. Hallelujah. They didn't believe at that time that many, amen, that were possessed by devils could be delivered, amen, from those spirits of darkness. Hallelujah. Amen, through the laying on of hands, through faith in God. Amen. They didn't believe, amen, that those that were possessed, amen, could be delivered from Amen. The demons that possess their body. Hallelujah. Amen. They didn't believe that blinded eyes could be opened, deaf ears could hear again, and the dead could be raised to life again. Hallelujah. They didn't believe it. Amen. So they they fight. They fight the Holy Ghost filled apostolic churches today. That fight's continuing on now. And I know that fight didn't start a little over 100 years ago. Amen. The apostolic church has been a fight ever since the day of Pentecost. It's been in a fight. Every generation has had their fight. Hallelujah. Amen. But much of our fight today comes through denominational, amen, religions. They fight the Holy Ghost apostolic church, amen, on their TV channels. They fight us on the radio. They fight us through social media. They fight us, amen, through books that they put in our so-called, amen, Christian bookstores. Hallelujah, there's no such thing as a Christian bookstore. It does not exist. Hallelujah. Most of the books in a Christian bookstore are written by people that don't know Jesus. I hate to say it, but it's the truth anyway. So be careful what you read. Be careful what you read. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you know that we made the list of 100 plus active occults in America? All you got to do is go down to the Christian bookstore and pick up the books, amen, that mentions the hundred plus, amen, occults that are actively, amen, alive and well in America today, amen. And all you got to do is get the book and open it up, and guess what? We're in there. 
We made the book. Hallelujah. Amen. We are among, amen, the other hundred plus active occults in America today, according to somebody's opinion. Hallelujah, that wants to fight us. Amen, that wants to fight the Holy Ghost that we believe in. Amen, that wants to fight this apostolic doctrine that we preach and love and appreciate. Amen, more and more and more as time goes on. Amen, I'm telling you, this thing don't get old to me. Amen, this thing will never become old hat to me. Hallelujah. Amen, I love the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen, preach it, preacher. Amen, remind me again. Amen, of how God shed his blood. Oh, Calvary, to save me from a devil's hell. Hallelujah. Amen. But writers and authors and amen and preachers and amen and everybody else is out there fighting us today. Tooth and toenail, they're fighting us. It's ludicrous today just how viciously people are trying to discredit us, affect us. Amen. To keep us from being effective. Amen. And preaching the gospel of Jesus today. Hallelujah. It's ludicrous how they, amen, are going to extremes to try to stop us today. Hallelujah. Amen. Science and scientists, amen, for, hundred, for hundreds of years now have written textbooks, amen, to be taught in our schools and in our colleges, amen, denouncing the creative idea, amen, that one supreme being created this universe. Hallelujah, they've spent hundreds of years now. These educated folks, hallelujah, and putting their heads together and saying, hey, we don't want God in our schools. and We don't want God in our curriculum anymore. We don't want God, we don't want that creative plan taught in our schools anymore. So we got to, amen, come up with another plan, and they did, hallelujah, and it's been taught in our schools for a long time now. Amen. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, Amen. Uh, another one of our fight. Amen. Hallelujah. We're, we're fighting denominational religions that hate us. We're fighting, amen, efforts through, amen, educated people in this world, the scientists, amen, the, amen, the people that are, hallelujah, supposed to be the cream of the crop, amen, hallelujah, writing books, denouncing the creative idea of a supreme being, hallelujah, amen, schools are zealously trying to affect our kids today, you hear me, amen, by denouncing the idea that there is a God. Amen. Uh, socialism is rampant. Hallelujah. Amen. There's so many things that we're facing today. Amen. Amen. On top of that, amen, the rich and the famous of the Hollywood elites are all lined up against my faith and your faith today. Hallelujah. Amen. We look at the wealthy of the world today. Many, many, and most of the wealthy of the world today have turned their back on God. And they become gods to their own selves. Hallelujah. They become their own gods. Hallelujah. So they, they have lined up against me. And they have lined up against you. The more ungodly they can make their movies today, the better they like it. The more ungodly the movie is, the more money they can make. The more gross and, amen, the more anti-Christ, hallelujah. Amen, the more ungodly the movie is, amen, the more millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, amen, those movies are going to rake in, hallelujah, for the rich and for the elite, amen, of Hollywood today, hallelujah. Amen, they're doing everything they can, amen, to come against my faith and your faith, hallelujah, today, hallelujah. Amen, amen. That simply means that they, amen, have had an effect on a whole lot of people's faith. When a movie comes out and on the first, amen, weekend that it debuts, amen, on the movie screens, hallelujah, they can stand up and boast that this movie gross, amen, $250 million, amen, or, or $300, $400, $500 million, amen, in just a matter of a days. I'm telling you, amen, you know what that tells me? That tells me that Hollywood, amen, has had an effect on a whole lot of people's faith. A whole lot of people is listening. And watching, amen, what the rich and famous are doing today, hallelujah. Amen, we're living in a day where governments are aligned against us. Alan Guttmacher Institute, I don't know where it's at. I don't know how it got its name. I wouldn't have gave it that name if it was my institute. 
But Alan Guttmacher Institute reports that since 1973, amen, Roe versus Wade Supreme Court decision to allow abortions in America that 50 million babies have died at the hands of abortionists. 50 million babies have died. Hallelujah. Ah, you may be for all of that, but I'm pro-life myself. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe God knows the baby in the wound. Amen. And I believe God has a plan for everybody. But hey, hallelujah. Amen. Our America, our world, hallelujah, is killing those dreams and killing those babies by the millions. 1.6 million babies die every year in America. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To the, hand, the hands of doctors that, amen, must not have a conscience. They must not have a conscience. I'm glad the judgment, amen, of these folks are in God's hands. Hallelujah. Amen. You hear me? I'm glad that judgment of these people is in God's hands. Amen, because I'm going to tell you, God's going to judge them accordingly. Amen, according to their works. Hallelujah. Amen, and if you are a mass murderer, hallelujah, amen, of unborn babies, I, your future don't look very well, amen, to me today. Hallelujah. Amen, if you can take those lives, hallelujah, God is going to judge those people. Amen, with righteous judgment. Amen, He's going to, which means he's going to judge them rightly as the murderers that they are. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Our government is lined up against us, taking public prayer out of schools. Amen. We are living today in a radically crazy world. It gets crazier by the day. It gets crazier by the hour. Amen. That has been obvious, amen, to all of us all week long. Amen. This world is radically crazy. Hallelujah. I don't know how much farther they can go in their craziness. Hallelujah. But yet, amen, that's where we are today. Hallelujah. And all of this stuff can affect our faith. It can zealously affect our faith. You know, I've never bought into the idea that there are aliens living among us. But I can tell you I'm almost there. I'm about that close to believing that, hey, <laughs> there are people in this world I live in that I don't think are from this planet. I don't know where they're from, but, hey, they can't come. They, they, they're, they're certainly not a part of the human race. Amen, that I'm a part of, hallelujah, but I'm almost there, amen, but let me tell you, amen, I've never bought into that alien idea, hallelujah, amen, but I do believe that there are people in this present world, amen, that have taken the steps needed to become reprobates, hallelujah, amen, I believe that we live in a generation of reprobates today, hallelujah, that have lost their minds, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. If people can take the steps to become a reprobate, amen, I believe that we're looking at a generation that has taken those steps. What we are witnessing today, amen, are efforts of people who do not have a conscience. That's all I can say. Amen, that's all I know to say. Hallelujah, these people cannot have a conscience. Amen. Or if they've got a conscience, they don't have a conscience like I have a conscience. Amen. Because when I do wrong, I'm telling you, amen, and I lay down and try to go to bed at night, it's like me trying to sleep, amen, with a wet mangy dog. My conscience begins to trouble me. My conscience begins to bug me and bother me, amen, until I get up and pray through about it and pray about it and, amen, and ask God's grace and mercy about it, hallelujah, and then go make it right. With whoever I treated wrong, hallelujah. We are witnessing today the effects of people who do not have a conscience. Anybody with a conscience would not and could, could not, amen, do the things that people so blatantly do today and brag about it and boast about it and make news about it. Hallelujah. Boy, there's a lot of stuff I could say. Can all of these... Things that are going on in our world today can't, can't, hey, Paul was concerned about what 
zealously affected, amen, that first generation church. And I've just mentioned a few things here this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. But can all these things that's going on in this crazy world around us, can it zealously affect us? Hallelujah. You know it can. You know it can. And I know it can. As a preacher, I know it can. Hallelujah. And as a saint of God, you know that it can. It can, amen, affect us negatively, amen, if we simply let it. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we can let all this stuff that's going on, uh, amen, seriously affect us in a negative way if we let it. Hallelujah. And, and let me just throw this in for good measure. Hallelujah. Amen. Especially, amen, in the midst of all of the other opposition that we face. Hallelujah. When family, amen, and friends join the band, amen, the bandwagon, hallelujah, to come against us. Hallelujah. Amen. How do we not let that negatively affect us? Amen. In the midst of all the other stuff that we're dealing with, when family and friends join, amen, the fray, amen, the bandwagon that chooses, amen, to come out against us, amen, hallelujah, to try to destroy us, how do we keep our sanity? How do we keep our smile on our face? Hallelujah. I don't know, but we're going to try. In Psalms chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Now, I'm going to read this first scripture. Amen. I already had all of my notes together. I already had everything I wanted to say. At the last minute, some of y'all uh, saw me run in my office. Amen. I ran in my office to write down this verse of scripture because God dropped it in my heart. Amen. Right there before I come out on the platform. Hallelujah. Psalms 2, 1 and 2 says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Amen. The kings of the earth set themselves against the rulers. Hallelujah. Take counsel together. And the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying. I guess I didn't give you the next verse of scripture. Hallelujah. But the, the question, amen, is asked there. Why does the heathen rage? I ask myself that question a lot of times. Amen. Why does the world hate us so? Why does religious people hate us so? Why does family and friends, amen, all of a sudden, amen, begin to hate us so? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I don't know, but the Bible says let the heathen rage. Amen. Let, let the heathen rage. Hallelujah. If they've decided to rage against us, amen, then all I can see is let them rage. Hallelujah, let them rage, amen. Hallelujah, let them say what they want to say. Let them do what they want to do, amen. Let them express their opinion any way that they want to express it. Just let them rage, amen. Let them rage and let it not have a negative effect on us, hallelujah. Let them rage and let it not, amen, turn my faith away from the God that I've chosen to serve, hallelujah. Let them rage this morning, hallelujah. Let them, amen, run our name through the mud, the muck, and the mire. Let them do whatever they want to do, hallelujah. Amen, I'm telling you, when God included me in his church, uh, amen, in April of 1979, guess what? Amen, I decided then I found something, uh, amen, that I was going to hang on to, amen, all the way to the end. All the way to the end. I got in this thing not to backslide. I ruled out backsliding right off the bat. Amen. It's been my purpose to hang on. Hallelujah. My old pastor used to say, hey, hey, man, if you got to tie a knot in the end of the rope and just hang on. Hallelujah. I don't know how many times in, hey, man, 38 years I've had to tie a knot in the end of the rope and just hang on for a while. Hallelujah. But thanks be to God, by hanging on, I gave myself another opportunity, hey, amen, for another day that my situation could change. Thanks be unto God, my situation did change. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I don't care if I get to heaven. Hey, man, I, you know, I don't care if I get to heaven just by the skin of my teeth. Let me tell you something. I don't want to get to heaven just by the skin of my teeth. I never knew my teeth had skin. I don't know what nut came up with that phrase. Just so long as I get to heaven by the skin of my teeth. I, don't, I didn't know teeth had skin. 
I want to get to heaven. <laughs> Amen. I want to hear the words, enter my good and faithful servant. You've been favored of a few things. Enter to the joy. <laughs> Amen. That I've Amen. That I've set aside for you or laid up for you here. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, I'm thankful this morning. I said all that say. <laughs> Somebody say I went through left field to get to first base. I know it. I do my best preaching on Wednesday night. I know it. <laughs> Verse 17 says of chapter 4 of Galatians. They zealously affect you, but not well. All these things that zealously try to affect us, but not in a good way, we got to understand that they want us to be excluded from God's kingdom. Huh? But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. <laughs> and not only when I'm present with you. Hallelujah. Amen. What Paul is saying to these Galatians here, amen, in the midst of all of the negative stuff that you're living through, in the midst of all of the bad stuff that you're having to face, hallelujah, amen, you need to start looking for the good, amen, in the middle of all of the bad stuff that's going on around you, hallelujah, amen. And if I got a message to this church today, amen, you need to anoint your eyes with eyes having say, God, amen, let me see your goodness, amen. Let me see the good, amen, in all of this negative world that I live in, amen, in all, amen, of the things that are going on to try to get me discouraged and out of church. Let me see the good. Let me be zealously affected, amen, by the good that I can see out of it. Hallelujah. I got to start looking for the good while I'm living through the bad times. I'm telling somebody here this morning, hey, man, you need to start looking for some good in the bad that you're facing. <laughs> here's some good things that we that should affect. Here's some good things, hey, man, that should affect our faith in God. In 1980, there was a survey, hey, man, it said in 1980 that 6% of the Christians in the world Amen. We're Pentecostals. 1980. 6% of the Christian people, pronounced Christian people of the world, amen, were Pentecostals. Hallelujah. In 2018, 38 years later, amen, a new survey went out that said, amen, 25% of the 2 billion Christians that are in the world today Amen. Are Pentecostals. Hallelujah. Amen. So in 38 years, amen, the Pentecostal effect upon this world has risen, amen, from 6%, amen, all the way to up to 25%. Hallelujah. Amen. So, hey, amen, that ought to have a positive effect. That ought to have, that, hey, 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 hey. Amen. In spite of what I may be fighting, in spite of what I may be dealing with, amen, this Pentecostal apostolic message, amen, is reaching somebody, amen, somewhere, amen, that is hungry to hear the truth. Hallelujah. 38 years. Went from 6% to 25%. Another survey said 35,000 people, amen, joined the Pentecostal church every day. Whoa. 35,000 people. Now, I know and I understand you do too that all of these Pentecostal churches are not apostolic, right? Amen. So we don't know, amen, exactly what percentage of it, amen, actually got into the apostolic Pentecostal church, amen. But at least it shows, a, amen, a sign that people are getting tired of dead, boring, amen, denominational religions. Hallelujah. And they're out there at least looking for something better. Amen. And all we can pray is, hey, amen, when they're out there looking, amen, for something better, amen, maybe they'll drop by our higher praise tabernacle on Sunday morning, amen, and feel the power and the anointing of God, amen, and get a touch from God, hallelujah, amen, that makes them stick their finger in the air and say, hey, I found home. I'm finally home. 
Hallelujah. I'm finally home. Hallelujah. Amen. I found out. I found today. Amen. What I've been looking for for the past 25 years. Hallelujah. I found it. Amen. In the apostolic church. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the Times of London reports that in the past six years, there's 168 Anglican churches have closed along with 500 Methodist churches and 100 Roman Catholic churches. Amen. The article says there has been a relentless decline in church activities, amen, for over 100 years now in England. Hallelujah. I've heard some sad stories about the churches in England. I don't have time to repeat all those stories. Hallelujah. But the article didn't stop there. The decline of churches in England. Hallelujah. 168 Anglican churches closed. Amen. In six years. Uh, amen. 500 Methodist churches closed in six years. 100 Roman Catholic church closed in a matter of six years. Amen. The churches are declining in England. Hallelujah. But, amen, the article went on to say, amen, but for every Anglican church that has closed in the past six years, there have been more than three Pentecostal churches, amen, that have taken their place. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you do the math, 168 Anglican churches closed. Amen. Three Pentecostal churches to each one that closed have taken their places. That means in the past six years, amen, that 504 Pentecostal churches, amen, have opened up in England. Hallelujah. Amen. That kind of brings a little bit, amen, hallelujah, of a smile to my face. Hallelujah. Amen. Especially when it mentions, amen, a hundred Roman Catholic churches have closed. Amen. That bring, that'll bring a smile to your face. Amen. There are articles that tell us today that Pentecostals are the fastest growing church, amen, in the Western Hemisphere. And then the same article says the Pentecostal movement, amen, has attracted mainly Roman Catholics in the Western Hemisphere. I'm telling you. I'm getting more and more and more excited, amen, about going to Brazil, amen, in December to be with, amen, Brother Alvy R. Neal. I've never been there, hallelujah. I've heard about all of the Roman Catholics that they've converted, amen, all the denominal churches, amen, that they've converted, all the denominal ministers that they've converted, amen, to this apostolic church. And now God, amen, has given me an opportunity to go there and see those people and meet those people, hallelujah. I'm excited about it. Hallelujah. It makes me smile to know that so many Roman Catholics, amen, in the Western Hemisphere are turning to, amen, this Pentecostal apostolic message today. Hallelujah. Makes me smile. Makes me happy. Amen. Especially when I think about Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4, which says, if I gave it to you, if I didn't, I'll turn and read it. Revelation chapter 18, amen, and verse 4 says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Hallelujah. Amen. Come out of who? Come out of Babylon. Come out of that old mother harlot church. Hallelujah. Amen. Come out of her, my people. Amen. That ye be not partakers of her sins. Amen. And that ye receive not of her plagues. It's almost today as if the Roman Catholic, amen, people are coming out of her. Amen. By the hundreds and by the thousands. Amen. Hallelujah. Responding positively. Amen. To a message that gives them hope. I wouldn't be a part of a church where the majority of the priests, amen, spend most of their time trying to find ways to abuse, sexually abuse, amen, young boys. I wouldn't be a part of that. I certainly wouldn't defend it. But they're going to keep on defending their priest 
while they're defending their priests and the sinful practices they had, that they have, they need to open their eyes over their congregation and realize, hey, their churches are empty and out left and right. Hallelujah. Amen. Because there's somebody down some street, amen, in their town preaching a message of hope, preaching a message of salvation, preaching a message, hallelujah, amen, that gives them what they really need. Hallelujah. There was one article that I read. Amen. Where they were trying to figure out why the Pentecostals are growing. Hallelujah. Amen. And this a certain article said, while most churches today speak mostly of religious dogma, the reason the Pentecostal churches are growing is because the Pentecostals, amen, speak directly to the heart. Hallelujah, amen. I'm telling you here today, amen. Hallelujah, I'm here in the higher praise tabernacle, amen, because a preacher mounted a pulpit one day, amen, and he spoke directly to my heart. Hallelujah, amen. He didn't give up and give me, he didn't get up and give me a whole lot, amen, of religious dogma, amen, but he spoke to my need, he spoke to my heart. Hallelujah. So let the heathen rage. Let the heathen rage. Hallelujah, it ain't going to have a negative effect on me. Let the heathen rage. It ain't going to stop me. Let the heathen rage, amen. It should not zealously affect you in a negative way. I'm closing. Hallelujah, I know we got to get out of here. <laughs> so I guess we don't need to come. And, amen, let's just get done and get closed so everybody can get to where they need to go. Hallelujah. Amen, so amen. here's what we need to decide. Let hell keep on howling. Just let hell keep on howling at us. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the demons of darkness, amen, do Satan's dirty work. Let governments and schools, the rich and the famous, the left-wing radicals, amen, just keep on foaming at the mouth. Hallelujah. Amen. The more that they foam at the mouth against us, amen, the bigger the church is getting. Amen. The more powerful the church is getting today. Let, devil, let, let, let hell howl. Let him howl at us. Amen. Let him take a stand against us and, amen, try to zealously affect us. Amen. To get us so discouraged, we'll just walk away from church. Not so, devil. The more you howl, amen, the more intense we're going to become. Amen. And hanging on to God in these last days. Amen. Staying with it, with this gospel truth. Amen. Hallelujah today. Amen. Let them howl. Let them howl. Let them write their books. Let them preach their sermons. Let them sing their songs. <laughs> Amen. I am zealously affected to do good. And the more that hell howls at me, it seems like the more determined. <laughs> amen. The more that hell howls at me. Amen. It seems like the more determined I am. Hallelujah. Amen. To see this thing through. I'm not giving up. I'm not about to quit. Hallelujah. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm going to keep on preaching. I'm going to keep on singing. I'm going to keep on worshiping. Amen, amen, amen. It might look bad out there in this world. Hallelujah. Amen. But you and I have got to realize, amen, righteousness, amen, does prevail in the end. Righteousness is going to prevail. We've read the end of the book. Hallelujah. Amen. We've read the end of the book. Amen. Hallelujah. John the Revelator. Amen. Saw a host of people standing before. Amen. The throne room of God of every nation, tongue, and kindred. Amen. There's going to be too many people up there to count. And guess what? I intend to be one of them. I intend to be one. I know this preaching seems to be going in line with what I preached. Last time I preached, but hey, 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 hey. The song they sung earlier. I got to learn to praise him through the good and bad. Hallelujah. Somebody hear me? Amen. I got to learn to praise him through the good and the bad. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Because when bad is happening, it's trying to have an effect on me. It's trying to get me to quit praising God. Amen. But when I learn to praise God through the good and the bad, amen, I've gotten one step closer, amen, to being right and ready when that trumpet sounds. Hallelujah. Amen. i got to learn to praise Him through the good and the bad. Praise Him. Amen. Praise Him because I tried to write the word. Praise is who I am. Praise is who I am. Praise is what I do. What do you do for a living, Brother Morell? Praise Jesus. <laughs> what occupation you got praising Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. My, my, my. Amen. My natural job don't mean, amen, a whole lot to me. Amen anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I want to learn how to praise God. I want to be, I want to learn how to occupy my time. Amen. Praising God, whether I'm in the church, out of the church. Amen. On vacation. Amen. At home working. Hallelujah. Whatever I'm doing, I want to learn how to praise Him. Amen. I want praise to become who I am. I want praise to be, be what I do. I want you to be zealously affected in the good. Hallelujah. Amen. We got we to gotta look through all the ugly. We got to look through all the ugly. <laughs> and see something that motivates us in the right direction. So we can turn the devil's tricks around on him. He's howling at us thinking he's going to scare us. Amen. He's battling us from every, every direction, thinking he's going to scare us. Hallelujah. Amen. But I want you to look at the devil in the eye. And I'm not telling you, look at your husband, wife, nobody else. Just look the devil in the eye. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And say, amen. I am zealously affected by all of this stuff to do good. Devil, you keep on howling, screaming. Amen. Keep on doing what you're doing because that's having a positive effect on me. You do it, amen, to negatively affect me. Amen. But guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn around. Turn it all around. I'm turning it all around. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm going to let it have a positive effect on me. Hallelujah. Amen. God is working for us. Amen. God is moving on our behalf. Amen. God is intervening for every one of us here. Hallelujah. We need to see it. We need to acknowledge it. Amen. We need to lift our head and praise Him for it right now. Hallelujah. At the end of this service, amen, lift your hand and praise God, amen, for every good thing that he has ever done for you. Thank you, God, for all of the good that you are doing for me right now, today. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a great big hand clap for praise. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to be zealously effective in a positive manner, in a positive way. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen. Turn around and shake hands with your brother and sister this morning. Thank you for coming. I went a little longer than I thought I would, but hey, giving you five minutes back at least. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah.